everybody. Welcome back to Praying Parents on the KH Podcast. My name is Melody Meek, and I'm here with my husband. Hey, everybody. I'm Chris. Thanks for joining us again. Or if you're joining us for the first time, we're on episode six. And Melody and I have been just taking some time, sharing what's on our hearts of how we can become better parents. Not perfect parents, but we can become praying parents. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about creating prayer mantras. Um, What's a mantra exactly? Um, We actually have the word typed up right now to explain the definition. So Melody, read to our listeners what a mantra is. It is a word or sound repeated to aid concentration in meditation, a statement or slogan repeated frequently. So over the course of our kids' lives, and again, we have a three-year-old and a five-year-old, and over the course of their lives, we've developed several different mantras to help them in their growing stages, such as use your words when you're angry, right? Um, Your hands are to help, not to hurt. These are little phrases that we just constantly say throughout our house, like um, our son is really good at this one. When you're angry, let's stop and let's take a deep breath and let's count to four. And he's really good at doing that on his own. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other mantras in our family? Yes, uh, don't say I can't, say I can. Or do your best and forget the rest is one that you like to say a lot. We do that a lot in martial arts. Just do your best and forget the rest. Hey, listen, in, in coming up with a mantra or a phrase that or a slogan that's repeated frequently, this is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. And to quote the famous uh, Qui-Gon Jinn from Star Wars Episode One, <laughs> The Phantom Menace, He said, your focus determines your reality. Now we're getting to the good spiritual stuff right here. Oh, goodness. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Listen, guys, we have the tendency to remember what we should forget and forget what we should remember. Yeah, that's true. So that's where mantras come in. They serve as reminders of who we are and what we are about as a family. And there's something about repeating them consistently that gets them from the head to the heart. You know what I'm saying? They become part of your operating system on a day-to-day process. For example, one of the biggest um, mantras that we actually have as a family, and my daughter, who's five, can repeat this. Um, We do this every morning on the way to school. And uh, sometimes when we're at home during the weekends, we have to say it in the mornings because it just helps kickstart our day. And our prayer mantra, it's a little lengthy, but it's a declaration over our day. And I'm just gonna say it for our listeners because I wanna encourage you, you can use this for your own family, you can tweak it to be your own, you can add in your own stuff, but um, ideally this is the Meek family mantra over each and every one of our days and it says, I declare that today is going to be a good day because it's a day that God has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am blessed. I am happy. I will smile. I will laugh because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm a good leader and a good leader leads by good example. So I will obey the first time, not tell a lie and treat others right because today is going to be a good day. And we always end with, in Jesus' name, amen. So in a way, we're helping teach our children how to declare over their life God's promises, God's establishment, and it's a prayer. So we are dedicating it over ourselves, but we're also pointing it back to Jesus. Well, it really helps set the mood for the morning, especially if the morning has gone off wrong. Yes. <laughs> With toddlers, that can always happen. Hey, listen, or teenagers. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We, we know how mornings can go. So in one of our last podcast episodes, we talked about the scripture that we pray over our kids, which is in Luke chapter 2, verse 52. This scripture summarizes up the growing process of Jesus from a child to an adult. It says that Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with both God and man. This is a prayer mantra and a theme that we pray over both of our children on a continual basis. But it may change in our verbiage from time to time. So, for example, um, we'll pray favor over them when they are in school and in our classrooms. And as they get older, we'll be praying favor over them as they make friends that are godly and will keep them on the right path. Yeah. We'll also pray over them as they apply for future jobs that God will give them favor for the right opportunity as well as their college choices and their career choices. It's true. So how do you, as a praying parent, go about finding a prayer mantra for your child specifically? Well, first of all, we want to encourage you that you need to pray about 
what you should be praying about, right? Because we can just rattle on and on with our prayers. And this is always our first objective anyway when it comes to prayers. It's pursuing God's agenda above our own agenda. So we want to encourage you that when you're about to come up with your own prayer mantra for your child, just ask Holy Spirit, what is it that I need as a parent to be specifically praying over my specific child? And secondly, you do need to go back to God's Word. Don't just read it. If all you do is read the Bible, then you're just actually misreading it. It's There's true. a lot of interpretation that comes with the Bible. The Bible wasn't meant to be read. It was meant to be studied and prayed. Yeah. So start reading God's Word and ask Him to speak to you from His already spoken Word. Hey, um, we all kind of remember the story of David, the shepherd boy, right? David versus Goliath. Everybody with me? Well, before he was known as the kid who defeated Goliath and stuff, all he was was just a shepherd boy. And um, before I kind of dig a little bit more into this, sometimes it's not enough that you come up with a mantra over your child alone. Sometimes you need to tap into your spouse and even someone who's in your child's life of influence um, or spiritual leader. One of the greatest dangers of a family relationship is that sometimes we become blind to the beauty and mystery of our own children simply because we live in close proximity of them. So here's the example that I want to set um, of David the shepherd boy. Do you remember the story in the Bible where the prophet Samuel was sent by God to go anoint the next king of Israel? Well, Samuel finds himself on a farm which belongs to Jesse. And Jesse brought out all of his sons for Samuel to look at. Samuel saw all of the sons. They were tall. They were strong. They were handsome men, the Bible says. And Samuel thought that surely one of them would be the next king. But God said, no, because I don't look at the outside. I look at what's on the inside. So finally, in the scripture, David was brought to Samuel and God told Samuel to anoint him as the next king of Israel. Even Jesse, David's own father, didn't even recognize that David had the potential to become a king in the first place. Because when Jesse looked at David, he just saw a shepherd boy. But when Samuel looked at David, what did he see? He saw a king. Sometimes we need a fresh set of eyes to establish a yeah. new vision for our children. Yeah, that's really good. No, so one of our primary responsibilities as parents is to help our children identify their life theme. We need to help them find the sweet spot where their God-given gifts and God-ordained passions overlap. We were very intentional about naming our children like most parents do. Names carry deep meanings, and they even foretell of who and what your child will become. So after a lot of prayer and consideration of the names we should be giving our children each time we were pregnant, we knew that these names would be their life themes. For our daughter, we named her Harmony Dawn Meek. And hey, it's not because we named our daughter Harmony because your name is Melody. <laughs> no, not at all. We actually had a lot of different signs as we were praying for her name um, that kept pointing out the name Harmony. And it was something that just like resonated deeply in both of our hearts. And we were like, you know what? Even if other people find this cheesy, we know God is asking her to be called Harmony. So it's because God told us that our daughter would grow up to be someone who would be a peacekeeper. Her name means the peaceful song that brings forth the morning light. We combined the meaning of harmony and dawn to create her full meaning, the peaceful song that brings forth the morning light. And the, th the theme scripture that we have spoken over her life is actually printed up and framed in her room, which says, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. Psalms 143.8. And for our son, we named him Colin Alexander, which means victorious defender of mankind. Sounds an awful lot like a superhero, right? <laughs> and he is our little superhero. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he is. He even entered this world like a little superhero. His <laughs> life <the> theme <laughs> is to be a hero, to be here to serve and to help and to save people, but not to save people in a way that, you know, only Jesus can. He's here to help save people, to point them to the true hero, which is Jesus. And his scripture that we have spoken over his life and also like Harmony, it's printed and framed in his room, is from the scripture, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, which says, Be strong and brave, do not be afraid, for I am the Lord your God, and I will go with you wherever you go. You know, it's really funny to see how they already are at 5 and 3. They're already fulfilling a lot of, of what um, we prayed over them and, and named them as. Harmony is a rule follower. She wants to keep the peace. If something is not right between yeah. her and someone else, like... 
she may have a hard time at first processing her emotions, but in the end, she's like, everything needs to be right. She wants to go on dates with us individually. She wants to have that connection. She um, she will tell somebody, you're not doing that. You're not doing the right thing. This is what we're <laughs> supposed to do. Like she, she really is like this little peacekeeper leader that wants to make sure everything is going right in the world. And then Colin, he literally is just like this, this, super empathetic kid but on top of that he's like uh super active and physical and just wants to always be a little superhero and pretending to be one and and wanting to fight the bad guys and he but his empathy skills i know is going to bring so much of that showing people who god is like he'll be able to be um really close and and um, relate to people because like he's he's just so empathetic and he'll be able to reach out to them in ways that others probably wouldn't be able to and hopefully bring them to God out of all that. And Absolutely. It's really fun to see that. So even if your kid is not three and five like ours are, your kid's a teenager, your kid's grown up and moved out of the house and has kids of their own. Listen, uh, that means you're a grandparent and you can be a praying grandparent just as much as you can be a praying parent. So Absolutely. today we want to encourage you um, to ask God to reveal a life theme, a prayer mantra, and a scripture that you can pair with over your children and over their children if you are already a grandparent. Because never underestimate the power of a praying parent or the power of a praying grandparent. Yeah. And when you can pair those kids' lives with a theme scripture and a mantra, if you will, Your prayers are like amplified. And when you repeat it constantly, it's just speaking life and blessings and hope for their future. So today, as we close, we just want to encourage you, take some time and meditate and ask God, hey, what is a life theme? What's a prayer mantra? And what's a scripture that I can be speaking over my children? And maybe you want to be like me and Melody. Maybe you want to just print it up off of your home computer and frame it. Rather, it's in your room. Maybe you print it just to put it in your Bible. Maybe you print it and you put it in their room. It's something that they can see, that you can see, and it's a constant reminder that God has a plan over your children's life. Yeah, and God could even give you different verses for different seasons for Absolutely. each child. That's I mean, good. He's He's always you know, involved in our lives, and He knows what each child needs as they grow. So that's good. Well, listen, guys, it's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or you have a testimony that you want to share with us about the Praying Parent podcast, you can send us your request and your questions to chris at the kingshouse.church. Until then, guys, we want to encourage you to keep praying, and we'll see you next time. Love you guys. Mm-hmm.